What's up guys, welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we're opening up a pack that we've opened a lot of in this series, which is Kaladesh. Uh, we do, I promise, pick these at random, but it is based off of availability, and Kaladesh happens to be very available. So, uh, with that, we are going to try and go through this like we would if it was a pack one in a draft. Uh, see if we can find something that would be first pickable. Uh, I may not read every single card if something is just clearly not uh, in the running. I may just avoid uh, reading it just because I don't want these to go too long. So we'll see what we get. Our first card is Thriving Grubs. It is one in red for a 2-1 Gremlin. When it enters the battlefield, you get two energy. And when it attacks, you may pay two energy if you do put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, I actually like this card in just a red aggressive deck. It gives you an energy sink, which is great. Uh, I also like that it's counters and not just plus one, plus one, say until end of turn or something like that. Uh, the counters really do make a big difference. So I'm not actually opposed to that. May not necessarily first pickable, but definitely interesting. Uh, Ma Malfist Squad, three and a black for a 3-1 human artificer with Menace. Menace is great, definitely unlimited. With Fabricate 1, you can either have it uh, put a 1-1 counter on this creature or put a 1-1 servo artifact creature token uh, into play. I like this because it's sort of a two for one no matter what, and the Menace really is great. Um, it makes a big difference and being able to sort of either buff it to to respond to something on the board or create more power spread out is definitely a useful trick. Again, not necessarily first pickable, but definitely a good card. Attuned with Aether is a great card. Uh, lets you search out a basic land and you get two energy for one green. Definitely not going to be a first pick, but not a bad card. Pressure point, tap target creature and draw a card. It is an instant for one and a white. I don't really like this. Um, it's a very defensive combat trick. And not that that's terrible, but it definitely doesn't really help you in your game plan that much. Uh, Riperian Tiger, three and two green for a four, four trample cat. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy. When it attacks, you may pay two energy. If you do, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. I love this card. Uh, the Trample really takes it over the top, and yeah, it's a 4-4 four, four for 5, but with Trample and with Energy, this can get out of hand very quickly. Not to mention, the art is actually beautiful on that as well. So, uh, Prophetic Prism, when enters the battlefield, draw a card. Uh, you can tap it and one of any color to add a mana of any color to your mana pool. It costs two, it is an artifact. It it basically just helps you smooth out your mana. It's definitely not a first pick, but something that if you're running even two to three colors, I would definitely recommend picking one or two of these up. Uh, it also lets you draw a card, which is great. Uh, Gear Seeker Serpent, five and two red for a five, six serpent. Uh, it does cost one less to cast for each artifact you control. So if you're in an artifact based deck, this is definitely what I would call a build around card. Uh, it's definitely gonna be your top end. It's huge amounts of damage. Uh, and with five and a blue, you can actually make it unblockable, which is insane. It's a great mana sink. Um, I don't know that I would take this over the tiger because it is a bit more of a build around card. That being said, this is very much an artifact format. And so in that case, it wouldn't be the worst idea to pick it. Uh, Consulate Skygate, two of any color for a zero four wall with defender, of course, and reach. Uh, no, not a good card at all. Uh, commencement of the festivities, one in a green, uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to players this turn. It is an instant. It's just a fog effect. I don't like fog effects in limited personally. Uh, I know Parks loves them, so maybe Parks would take that. Uh, engineered Might, three, a green and a white for a sorcery. You get to choose one. Target creature gets plus five, plus five, and gains trample until end of turn. Or creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and gain vigilance until end of turn. Uh, this is a buff of all buffs. This is actually really good as almost a finisher card. Uh, it'll definitely get you in for a lot of damage is the idea behind it. So you can really choose how it affects your board. If you've got quite a lot of tokens out, for instance, maybe you've got a bunch of servos, uh, you can boost all of them by two and then give them vigilance, which sounds great, right? Uh, I definitely wouldn't first pick this, but if I was in a green-white kind of token strategy, It'd be a fantastic finisher. So, uh, great, great card. Uh, Speedway Fanatic, one and a red for a 2-1 with haste already. Pretty great. Uh, when it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains haste until end of turn. So you can actually get your vehicles out and dealing some damage a turn earlier than normal. This is a great enabler for vehicles. It's also just a great haste creature. 
Uh, a 2 1 for 2, yeah, it dies a little bit easier, but it does have haste, and that upside with the vehicles is fantastic. So, uh, again, I don't know that I'd pick it over the Tiger, but it's definitely a great card. Uh, Fairgrounds Trumpeteer, 2 and a green for a 2 2 elephant. At the beginning of each end step, if a 1 1 counter was placed on a permanent under your control this turn, put a 1 1 counter on this card. Uh, so this works really well with Fabricate, right? If you have some Fabricate creatures already, you can kind of uh, put some counters on those as soon as they come into play, and then actually boost this guy as well. He's a bit too much investment for me to first pick, I would say, but definitely a strong card. And a Madcap Experiment. Uh, yeah, not going to be good and limited, but it is interesting. So three and a red. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. It deals damage to uh, you equal to the number of cards dealt, or excuse me, revealed this way. Uh, this is actually a modern constructed deck with Platinum Imperium, but definitely not good uh, in limited, unfortunately. And we did get a foil, a Lawless Broker, two and a black for a 3-2, which is actually decent stats. When it does put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, again, it would work very well with the Fairgrounds Trumpeteer because no matter what, you're going to be able to get a counter on it. Uh, but definitely not first picking it for me. So in my opinion, I actually really like the Tiger. Um, the other card I would probably consider above it would be the Speedway Fanatic. So these are really the top two for me. Um, this just enables so much, but this is just kind of always good in a green deck. So I could really see either way um, because I'm not... Uh, I would say because I like aggro decks in limited, I might actually go the Speedway Fanatic. Uh, it also just synergizes with a lot of stuff. So that would be my pick. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if I got this completely wrong, that is totally fine by my mind. So uh, with that, though, guys, I do want to thank you for watching this episode. If you liked it, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And if you really enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. With that, though, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you.